You're listening to the Proof Book Club podcast, the show that challenged you to change your mindset through hearing about dope books. Thanks for hanging with the crew to get advice, ask questions, and gain knowledge with me, your host, Sade Hill. What up, crew? What's good? It's your girl, Sade, checking in for another episode of the Proof Book Club podcast. Yes, let's get it popping. Yo, 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 yo. I don't even know what a thought. Well, first, how are you guys feeling? (laughs) I hope you're feeling spectacular. I am feeling, feeling good, feeling great. Hey, feeling good, feeling great. How are you? I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm happy. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's a lot happening. But I'm going to just say this. When you put work into yourself, you really start to see stuff just clearly. You start to realize what you want and what you're willing to put up with, to not put up with. It's just the journey that I am on, the things that I have been through, sacrificed, and the work that I have put in of two years consistently working on self-awareness from the type of books I read to the people I prayed into my life to the curating of my social media to the effort that I put into my real estate to just doing the work on self, my health, um, all those things, all those things, the the disappointments, the the no's that I got, the no's that I still get, I'm thankful. The yeses, the successes, the everything, I'm thankful for everything. But one thing I'm definitely thankful for is showing up for myself and realizing my value, how I should be treated, and how settling is not an option, okay? There's a song that I have on repeat, repeats, which is perfect for the book we're getting into, Atomic Habits. It, it's called Automatic Woman by Her. And let me tell you, that song is like my theme song forever. Um, some of the lyrics in the song is like, um, I'm going to find it really quick. Don't know what I do, 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 like an automatic. I shoot for the stars, do, do. I'm not, I don't think I can play it on the pod. I'm going to turn the value down. But she says, everybody got a motive. Mine is to motivate. Got to get the cake. Rise on my worst days. First place, first place. Circle around the edge. Fall and get back up. What What you going to do when you're back against the wall? Me, I'm going to risk it all. Nothing about me weak. Always land on my feet. Always do what I need. I'm an automatic woman. This song is in my spirit. Okay, like no matter what happens, I'm going to shoot for the stars. I'm going to aim for the moon because I'm an auto, auto, automatic woman. I'm still learning the song, but it's on. It's called Automatic Woman by Her. And it was actually on the soundtrack Bruised, the Netflix movie with um, Holly Berry. The movie was good. The soundtrack was hella dope. Definitely uh, check that. Check it out. But that Automatic Woman song on repeat for real for real all right but yeah i hope y'all are feeling good if not hopefully listening to me on this podcast listen to the words that's in this book the who gonna check me booze and go listen to that song that song will get you his hype it will get you out your mood and i realized every time i'm feeling a little funky about what's going on uh i turn that song on i turn that song on and don't think the things that Some of the stuff that's happening to me is some of the stuff that I'm choosing to happen to me because I had self-revelation of self, of Sade. And I'm just, I'm really excited about the future. And I remember talking to somebody and it's about processing. We're not meant to be on this earth for everything to be perfect. But as long as we're processing and getting through, whoo. Everything gonna be all right. Oh man! All right, I gonna hold y'all. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. Let's get into it. Who go check me, boo? God is. He is always checking us. And this check comes from 
believing bigger the devotional journal i've quoted this journal a few times it's a hundred days y'all so if you hear it a few more times it's a lot of good stuff and i reference reference it often okay so the title was start before you're ready and i felt like this was perfect because we're getting into atomic habits and before we get into that it's like start before you're ready sis because half the time we be waiting and we'll never be ready because we'll, something will always happen so start before you are ready the scripture of that was Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10 do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin so Starting small goes back to Atomic Habits and it talks about doing those little small things that add up to the big things. And God recognizes and sees those things. Trust me, baby. I know. Your girl knows. All right. So one of the favorite in the passage, these are the things that stood out to me. It says it is meant to be. No, wait. I'm sorry. If it is meant to be, it is not a biblical principle. It's a hollow mantra that gives us permission to passively play with God as opposed to pursuing an assignment. If you're watching YouTube, I literally can show you where it says, wow. I literally wrote, wow. Because I think the day that I read this, I said, if it's meant to be, it'll be. <laughs> and I was like, that ain't even right. Okay. Um, but yeah, I really like that. And also, wait. Is actually an action word. Ooh, let's pivot how we look at the word wait. It says, other translations say wait means trust, hope, and look for him. What if to wait meant to align? Oh, wow. To actively look for and step into holy flow. Waiting is a time for preparation. Starting before you're ready is the ultimate faith step. And faith steps are the kind of steps that God not only orders, but prioritizes. Just remember, it takes courage to be a catalyst, but we have to give God something to work with. He can't bless steps that we never take, a dream we never deploy, and a mission we never start. Whew, so girls and guys. Let's start before we ready. All right. The prayer was, Lord, detox me of procrastination and perfectionism. With you, I have everything I need to begin and thrive. Whew, we have everything we need, y'all. We just got to have that faith, step out on hope and trust in God that he will guide us. And we're doing his will. All right. That was a who gonna check me, boo. God is Zechariah 4 verse 10. All right. Woo. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Hey, the Crew Book Club podcast got a five star, five star, five star review. Oh, from Brown Sugar K. All right. Life Changing Podcast was the title. Mm, I, you was listening to, you've been listening, to, you listened to the last book because I kept saying life changing. These are the type of books that I that I want us to indulge in, things that are life-changing. And I feel like that would be a good title for self-help. I feel like self-help is just, uh, whew, it don't sound exciting, but life-changing books. <laughs> I feel like that sounds more exciting. I would be more excited about changing my life than talking about self, than me looking at it as self-help. Like, uh, I got to face myself. <laughs> You know, sometimes, y'all, we got to manipulate the word so we can accept it. I hate that, but it is what it is. Oh, I just said it. It's not is what it is. Whatever, whatever. All right, anyway, back on track. It said, it reads, Brown Sugar K says, this podcast is for every person that wants to elevate their life. Elevate, elevate, elevate. Sade presents some society self, favorite self-improvement authors in a fun and relatable way. This is my top go-to podcast. Thank you so much. I love reviews like this. I love sharing. Y'all see that? Five, 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 five. Um, yes, that is my purpose. My purpose is to make this fun and lighting because when I first discovered self, quote unquote, self-help, I was like, oh, I don't feel like reading them books. Why aren't them books boring? But then when I actually started, I was like, okay, I got to share this with the world. So that is 
the Crow Book Club podcast. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. You don't want to read it? You can hear me talk about it. Ew. <laughs> but yes, that was some crew love. Whenever you want to leave some crew love, definitely drop it on the Apple podcast platform. And if you're on any other po- platform, continue to share with your friends. I see you guys sharing it because my numbers are going up. So I really appreciate that. And the is reaching is reaching and you guys are loving it. So I appreciate all the crew love and everything. So continue to share. And if you can leave a written review, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so, 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 so much. Um, Actually, it's funny. I had somebody message me, say, hey, I want to leave a review for your podcast, but I can't. And I was like, uh-uh, yes, you can. You know somebody with an iPhone, grab their iPhone and leave the review. <laughs> leave the written review. I want to read them. All right. All right. So let's get into our new book, Atomic Habits by James Clear. It says, tiny changes, remarkable results, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break the bad ones. We we breaking bad habits, y'all. All All right. So in chapter one, we're not even going to wait any longer because I've been keeping y'all. The surprising power of atomic habits. Why small habits make a big difference. Page 15 through 19. I'm going to read my favorite little tidbits from the book. From those two pages, too often we convince ourselves that massive success requires massive action. We put pressure on ourselves to make some earth shattering improvement that everyone will talk about. Meanwhile, improving by 1% isn't particularly noble, notable. Sometimes it's even unnoticeable. Oh, sorry. Sometimes it's even noticeable, but it can be far more meaningful, especially in the long run. Mm, those one percent one percent improvement is better than one percent decline it didn't say that in a book but it gives us these little graphs to show you how it's, it's better to have some type of improvement and take some type of step than to go back or take none at all because you're either gonna be stagnant or you're gonna decline so i would rather be the person making little steps to get to where I need to be than the person who's not. I always say that it's better to do something than to do nothing at all. Okay. So habits are the compound interest of self-improvement. The same way that money multiplies through compound interest, the effects of your habits multiply as you repeat them. Mm, Yep. That's right. All right. So I just felt like (sighs) this just already hit. What I I be preaching is do something than to not do nothing at all, even if it's a little bit, a little bit. Okay. So also it says what progress is really like page 20 through 21. I like this. It says, y'all know about bamboo. Oh, listen, bamboo can barely be seen for the first five years as it builds extensive root systems underground before exploding 90 feet in the air within six weeks. This makes me think, you ever, someone gets really famous like that, and you think, oh my God, like they just came out of nowhere. I think I was listening, to, I think it was a documentary or an interview with Lizzo, and she was like, no, I mean, she was grinding, grinding, like a lot of these artists, grinding. And I feel like that's kind of like bamboo. They underground they working they working we don't know who they are but they putting in that work and then all of a sudden it's like bam in your face and i feel like i'm gonna just put it out there that's gonna be me in this podcast people don't know who i am but give me some time okay and it's gonna be like bam and they're gonna be like well dang where she come from i'll be like uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. your girl been right here all along grinding Okay, so yes, I love that. It also says change can take years before it happens all at once. Mastery requires patience, 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 patience. Now, it didn't say it required you to be still. Mastery, I feel like that's an action word. You mastering something, you working it, you working it, but you have to continue to work it in patience because a lot of times we're ready to rush stuff And half the time, we don't even need those things right now because we haven't mastered 
what we need to master to be to take on the load of the success that comes with it. So continue to master and be patient. All right. Let's talk about forget about goals and focus on systems instead. Pivoting how we think about things and not getting caught up. It says, what's the difference between systems and goals? I know you're trying to figure out, huh? Goals are about the results you want to achieve. Systems about the processes that lead to those results. We can have goals all day, but if we don't have the right systems in place, the right habits in place, uh uh-uh. That goal can, you either going to give up on that goal or it's not going to be attainable. All right? I think about just real estate for me. It's like, sorry, y'all. I got to wipe my nose. It's like if I wanted, a, like the average person probably can handle, average realtor can probably handle maybe five clients before it gets overwhelming and you need to hire assistants and things. But if you think about it, if you don't have the proper systems and technology in place, you it can help. You could lose a lot of organization and all those things if you don't have the right systems in place. But they talk about the problem with not having the right systems in place but having a goal. Problem number one, winners and losers have the same goals. Mm-hmm, I said that right. We all start off wanting to be at this pivotal point of success. And, of course, your success – is different but in this particular thing for me i'm talking for my success peace is success and most people uh, it's peace but i feel like there's categories of success but i i want to be able to bring home the bag and have peace ain't nothing wrong with that don't let society tell you that it is either all right but winners and losers have the same goals we can con we can concentrate on people who end up winning the survivors and mistakenly assume that ambitious goals lead to their success while overlooking all the people who had the same objective but didn't succeed. The goal had always been there. It was only when they implemented a system that continuously continuous small improvements that have achieved a different outcome. Listen, and this was me. I want to do a podcast. I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to do a podcast. But I wasn't researching podcasts. I wasn't surrounding myself with people who were doing podcasts. And it clicked. I was like... I need to be in a room. I need to do the research. I need to hold myself accountable. I need to put in the work. And that's what made me a survivor. And to this day, when I go to networking events, they're like, oh, you're the realtor that does the podcast. And I said, oh, I was thinking about doing podcasts. I want to do a podcast. Okay, well, keep thinking about it. And let me let send me the podcast when it's done. But you got to put things in place that will allow you to achieve the goals and not just want the goal because we all have goals it just depends on who putting them in and who not who putting in the work and who not and i'm gonna tell you the difference between me and a lot of people and you need to think the same way is that we gonna put in the work the crew we gonna put in the work we gonna become masteries of this thing of whatever thing that you're doing all right problem two achieving a goal is only a monetary change i love this achieving a goal only changes your life for the moment that's the that's the thing. We think we need to change our results, but the results are not the problem. When you solve problems at the results level, you only solve them temporarily. In order to improve for good, you need to solve the problem at the systems level. Fix the inputs and outputs will fix themselves. Ooh, that was so good. That was like in my business, y'all. All right, problem number three. Goals restrict your happiness. You would think, oh, if I achieve my goal, I'm going to be so happy. Eh, Think again. Goals create an either or conflict. Either you achieve your goal or, oh, sorry. Either you achieve your goal and are successful or you fail and you're a disappointment. You mentally box yourself into a narrow version of happiness. When we fall in love with the process rather than the product, you don't have to wait to give yourself permission to be happy. And when I say you reach your goal and you should be all full, all full of joy and happiness, you will for that moment. But you trust me, when you get to that goal, it's going to be something else you're going to want to attain. And you have to fall in love with the process and not the actual goal. 
Because I'm pretty sure when you make your first 100K, your first six figures, you're like, okay, oh, I want more, I want more, I want more. We have that mentality because you don't want to get comfortable if you like me. We just don't like men. We, we like getting uncomfortable. So <laughs> you got to embrace the processes. Problem number four, goals are at odds with long-term process, with long-term progress. Whew. The purpose of setting goals is to win the game. The purpose of building systems is to continue playing the game. Ultimately, it is your commitment to the process that will determine your progress. Let me say that again. Ultimately, it is your commitment to the process that will determine your progress. People be like, oh, I want to have a successful business and I all I want to make is this. I'm like, okay, so you're just going to stop? You're just going to sell, okay, customer number, I only want 100 customers. Customer one-on-one, I'm no longer taking any business. That don't even sound right. Maybe you can sell the business, but you still got to put in the work so somebody can see the value. And guess what? Those systems have to be in place before somebody buys that company. So mm, check it, check it, check it. That's why this book right here, I'm telling y'all, y'all are not going to be upset that you, uh, if you buy it. Okay, so let's get into ch- chat. Let's get into chapter two, how your habits shape your identity and vice versa. Out the gate, first page of that chapter, it says changing your habits is challenging for two reasons. One, we try to change the wrong thing. And two, we try to change our habits in the wrong way. So let's discuss how we address that. All right. So the there is three layers of behavior change and I love how that he gives diagrams in the in the book as well some people are vision people and they need to see all right and my podcast is your listeners I'm doing my YouTube video they need to see it okay there's outcomes processes and identity the first layer of changing is changing your outcomes changing your results losing weight publishing a book winning a championship most of the goals you set are associated with this level of change the second layer is changing your progress Mm. changing your habits and systems implementing a new routine at the gym decluttering your desk for a better workflow developing a meditation practice most of the habits you build are associated with this level okay third and the deepest layer is changing your identity And let me tell y'all, there's so much about changing the identity, you know, changing your beliefs, your worldview, images, your judgment about yourself and others. Most of the beliefs, assumptions and biases you hold are associated with this level and outcomes are about what you get processes about what you do. Mm, So good. Behind every system of action is a system of beliefs. And a lot of these things that we believe in is wrong. (laughs) Behavior that is incongruent with self will not last. You may want more money, but if your identity is someone who consumes rather than creates, then you'll continue to be pulled towards spending rather than earning. You may want better health, but you continue to prioritize comfort over accomplishments. You'll be drawn to relaxing rather than training. It's hard to change your habits if you never change the underlying beliefs that lead to your past behavior, okay? You have a new goal and a new plan, but you haven't changed who you are. Man, bum, 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 bums, pew, pew, just dropping, shots taken. Like, listen, you want to change, but you're not even doing the necessary things to change. And then having those systems in place, Because you haven't changed who you are. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Mm, So good. I hope that resonates with y'all. Like that part where it said it's hard to change your habits if you never change the underlying beliefs that led to your past behavior. You're doing the same thing over and over and getting the same results. Oh, I don't know who that hit just now. Okay, but we're going to move on right along. On page 35, it says, you are simply acting like the type of person you are to believe yourself to be. Are you? Hmm? Are you doing that? Are you simply acting like the type of person you're already believe yourself to be? Are you practicing that? I feel like it's one of those things 
when you have repeated a story to yourself for years, it's easy to slide into that mental grooves and accept them as facts. We don't have to accept that, y'all. Like, even if you do slide back into something, don't stay there for too long. Like, get back, get back, get back. Like, and don't condemn yourself either. Like, you failed, that's okay. Get back up, let's try it again. All right? So, it says this, and I'll, and I'll end here on chapter two about habits and shaping your identity. There's a two-step process for changing your identity, right? Let's talk about that. There's so much stuff, but I'm trying to like get it in for you so you can get the concepts and so we can get this episode. But there's two simple ways, okay, to help change your identity. One, decide the type of person you want to be. And two, prove it to yourself with small wins. I always tell clients, let's celebrate the small wins because sometimes you can get overwhelmed with the things that are happening in the home buying process, or if you're putting in systems to accomplish your goals, we can get overwhelmed by the little things because we want to be so excited about the big win, but we need to accomplish the fact that we got up today, we read today. If you're a writer, you wrote a page to that book, like you did something, celebrate those small wins because that's going to help motivate you to do it again, all right? So I really love that. So those were like some of the key points out of the chapter one in chapters one and two these are so good let me tell y'all I have way more highlighted than what I said but I feel like those were the strong punches that hopefully motivate you to get the book for sure um but yeah so this book I'm super excited about and the challenges I can't wait to get into those with you guys (laughs) I cannot wait (laughs) But if you're having struggles with setting habits and doing those type of things, I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be associated with a boundary that you're probably not setting with yourself and respecting that boundary. Kind of what we learned in the last book. If we're going to make a commitment to ourselves, let's uphold that. We make commitments to everybody else, but not ourselves. So let's practice that and if you're struggling you don't know and you say like, well I'm just so confused and things of that nature I'm realizing with confusion and misunderstanding is two things that help me Jesus and therapy I'm telling you I cannot stress it enough so that's why I'm partnering up with better help for the crew the sponsor of this episode so you guys can get some therapy and I'm giving 10% off your first month of professional therapy with better help so that's betterhelp.com slash crew love that's betterhelp.com slash crew love better h-e-l-p dot com slash crew love <laughs> the link will be in the show notes as well and that. I feel like is what really changed my life. Like I said, getting the therapy, becoming self-aware of characteristics and people that I shouldn't be dealing with. So check out betterhelp.com. I actually have a session scheduled tomorrow because I'm in this weird space. And I was like, okay, I need my therapist. I did a session last week. It went really good. So I'm happy about the therapist that I have now. And I can't wait to dive in to some things with her tomorrow morning. So don't bother me. (laughs) <laughs> oh, you won't be because you're listening to this on Monday. Oh. <laughs> That's how excited I am for y'all to listen, get this episode. All right. So let's get into the challenge of the week. The challenge this week is to cast your vote. Yes. Cast your vote for yourself. On page 38 through 39, that was the motivation. It says every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. Each habit not only gets results, but also teaches you something far more important to trust yourself. When the votes mount up and the evidence begins to change, the story you tell yourself begins to change as well. It works the opposite way. Every time you choose to perform a bad habit, it's a vote for identity. The good news is that you won't need you don't need to be perfect. Your goal is to simply win the majority of the time. So this week for the challenge of the week, I want you to get a piece of paper, a board, your phone, but keep a tally of one habit, whether it's working out or writing a book or starting your podcast, whatever it is, do a column, good habit, bad habit. 
And then I want you to tally off. And I'm praying by the end of the week, you have more good habits than bad habits. Put it somewhere where you can see it so you can hold yourself accountable. Okay. And do what you say you're going to do. Respect yourself. I feel like that's the thing. Respecting yourself is doing what you say you're going to do for yourself. All right. So that was the challenge of the week. All right. So what would the crew do? Ask advice. And this was cute. It came from the DM. It says, I see you're doing the book about habits. What is your bad habit? And are you doing anything to fix it? Y'all so nosy. Uh-uh. <laughs> this is supposed to be you asking me about your life. Not you asking me about mine. <laughs> Touch your nose. Okay. So a bad habit. I'm ch- I'm gonna go. I, I feel like I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do a deep one, and I'm gonna do a a loose a loose one. My bad habit, which I have been actively working on, is doing things that I don't really want to do. <sighs> that is a bad habit. So a habit that I'm cutting is being honest with myself. Do I really want to do this for myself, or am I doing this? for someone else and am I'm doing this for a perception and it's funny I just having a conversation about that with someone like this is what you're supposed to do is it though is it really though so that's my bad habit now another little bad habit is eating popcorn in the middle of the night I love popcorn home style popcorn and I know it's like this is a habit like girl you try to get abs you can't be eating popcorn 11 30 at night with some ginger ale <laughs> So that is my tally. Uh, That's the challenge. I'm going to put the night that I don't eat popcorn, 1130 at night. (laughs) We're going to see how that goes. But yeah, share some of your bad habits and ask me, I have this bad habit. What advice do you give me? I want to know your business. Stop asking about mine. (laughs) All right. That was what would the crew do? Ask advice. Now, let's, I cannot leave this episode without giving you the quote of the week. Quote of the week. That makes me, when I just did that, it makes me think of, what's the uh, Tyler Perry show? When a guy be like, this is your granddaddy. This is your granddaddy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't play. <laughs> oh, brown, brown. It just came to my mind. Brown, brown, brown. All right. Anyway, back on track, Shada. Get together, girl. Quote of the week comes from page 22, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Atomic Habits. It says, On page 22, the seed of every habit is a single tiny decision. But as the decision is repeated, the habit sprouts and grows. Yes. So go out there, sprout and grow by changing your habits from bad to good. Thanks for hanging with the Crew Book Club podcast. It's your girl. It's been fun, y'all. It's always fun. I love y'all, and I will see y'all next week. Hey. Want to be a part of the crew? Hit that follow button so you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, I would appreciate you showing crew love by rating the show on iTunes and Spotify. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share and tell a friend so your whole crew can be growing with you. Let me be the first to tell you, welcome to the crew.